Mike Galsworthy joins us from London. He is the founder of Scientists for the EU and a media commentator on how Brexit actually affects the UK's scientific community, among other things. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. You know, I think I spoke to you once before, and you were really in the mindset that somehow the, the majority of Britons really didn't want Brexit, that the referendum was deeply flawed. Many people agreed with you, but after the last election, I need to ask you how you feel today. Is this what the majority of Britons want now? I think the majority of Britons are absolutely exhausted. If you look at the polling that has been ongoing since the referendum, uh, initially after the referendum, most Brits did want to leave the EU by a narrow margin. That largely crossed over in summer 2017, and this is various polling agencies doing tracking. And even, even today, as we leave polls, on the public show that there is still a, a narrow majority for those that want to remain over those that want to leave, ironically, by about a 52 to 48 margin. Uh, but what happens with the UK general election is that it's a first-past-the-post system. So Boris Johnson knew that he only needed to get about 43 or 44 percent of the vote in order uh, to win more constituencies, as many constituencies as he needed to win the country overall, and that's, that's what he got. So there was actually about 53% of the public that voted for parties that wanted to put his deal, or, or a deal, back to the vote. But um, as it happened, uh, Boris Johnson won in a landslide, so by the mechanics of uh, our democratic system, then he has full ability to go ahead with the Brexit deal that he negotiated with the EU, and that's what's happening, and that's why we're leaving today. Right. So yep. an, in, an interesting turnaround from 2016, where the claim was that the Parliament was for remaining and the people were for leaving, and then, uh, according to Brexiteer law, this is what's caused all the problems since. But now, actually, we've got a situation with a new Parliament that wants to leave and a public uh, that by the polls would prefer to remain, but they're absolutely exhausted, and so it's just happening. Okay, so now we got a few hours to go before we're going to have 11 months <laughs> to wait for a trade deal that Boris Johnson seems to think will be fully negotiated by the end uh, of this year. Where does that leave? Yeah, All this well, 10 months. It's actually 10 months because the deal needs to be agreed um, with enough time for it all to be signed off before the end of the year. So not a lot of people are aware of that. It's, it's 10 months from now and then that extra month grace period for it to be signed off across the right. EU as well. So very, very tight amount of time. And you represent, as we said before, scientists for the EU. Where does that leave communities yep. like yours, that kind of uncertainty? How does it affect the work that you do, the relationship you have with other scientists in Europe, and the kind of trade that your community needs to be involved in? Right. Um, it, it is still up in the air. Um, as soon as the Brexit vote happened, we measured the impact, uh, or, or we took a lot of um, uh, surveys and tests around the impact. And there was impact immediately from the 2016 vote in terms of some people turning down jobs or the falling pound, meaning that lab uh, equipment from outside was harder to buy, or collaborations that were going to go ahead were then put on hold in order to wait and see what happened. And what we've actually seen over time is that the UK's strength on the EU science program in terms of number of grants it's applying for and winning across the board has been dropping over the years, um, partly because there's always been that uncertainty of maybe we're going to crash out, maybe we're going to crash out, which would have thrown everything up in the air. We have, by the nature of this implementation period, guaranteed until the end of this year and we hope that for the next science program that starts in 2021 to get a role on that. And pretty much everyone acknowledges that that would be to our benefit. Um, but this government um, is not going to make any commitments at this stage. So the Liberal Democrat Party tried to get the government to include in its withdrawal bill a guarantee 
that we would have a role in the Erasmus exchange program and that we would have a role on Horizon Europe, the next big uh, EU science program. And this government knocked those out because um, they said they didn't want to be sort of held to anything. But of course, that then leaves our universities up in the air thinking, well, are they serious that they want to go through with this if they haven't tied themselves to it? Could we be facing another crash out at the end of the year? In which case, for science, the uncertainty continues. Right. You know, yesterday, Mike, we saw some of the UK's MEPs upon leaving Parliament in Brussels say that they actually hoped the UK uh, would rejoin the EU one day. Let me ask you, if do you think that's yep. a possibility? And might we see people like you continue to campaign the way you have in the past to be part uh, of the European Union? <laughs> short answer, and this is falling out, short answer is yes. Um, essentially, there's a lot of people in this country that feel very British European, and actually even more so since the referendum campaign. It's caused a huge campaign upswell, and in fact, out of all of the European countries, in the UK is where you've got the strongest and best organized pro-EU community. Um, so I think so, yes, but it's obviously a long game. Um, in fact, when the results came in from the general election, I put out a tweet saying, right, I'm starting the rejoin campaign now. Who's with me? And it got <laughs> thousands and thousands of, of likes and retweets and people saying, yeah, I'm with you and, and all the rest. But pragmatically, um, we have to sort out our own household first. We can't go diving back into the EU now with a divided nation, uh, not knowing whether the nation is more aligned with America or aligned with Europe at the moment, not with the big open festering sores of inequality, regional disparities that we've got in the country. So essentially, step by step, those European uh, values that um, a lot of us hold dear, we need to win over in the country. Um, and so, yes, there's lots of people that do have rejoin burning in their heart but it has to move through our, our country's values first. We have okay. to win a lot of um, uh, home political battles uh, along the way before we're in a, a state where we can. Mike Goldsworthy, great to have you. Thanks so much for joining us.